So today's Red Dane top tip, we want to look at the different ways of utilizing summer grazing. And the four distinct different ways that, that I can think of or that we do is using uh, improved pastures, things like star grass and road grass, or utilizing your bush grass, so how you move your cattle through a, a bush area of grazing. Or we, so the third, the third thing would be making hay, which is something we commonly do in Zimbabwe, but getting that done well and at the right times. And the fourth one is grass silage. Today we want to run through a few of the ways that you can utilize your summer grazing. Here today we've got one of our bush dairies and we've, we've got a nice herd of dairy cows that are producing good amounts of milk off the natural summer grazing. With either uh, this here is actually an improved pasture of mostly star grass and roads grass and you can see that the cows are doing really well uh, on this grazing. To make the most of your grazing though you do need some sort of grazing system. Uh, what we've got here uh, on this improved pasture is a strip grazing system where we're using electric fence um, to move the cows at least twice a day, sometimes three depending on how they are grazing and, and the type of grass available. Um, so some of the things that you need to think about is the amount of cows in an area so that you're keeping, you're grazing your grass uh, at the right time uh, when it's still in vegetative growth before it's too tall before it gets anywhere near seeding and then taking it down to a level where you've still got enough leaf for it to uh, regenerate really quickly so that's what you can see here the grass is at a pretty decent stage it's, it's a fairly rough pasture um, but we're still getting as I say good volumes of milk one of the one of the problems or one of the challenges is especially with dairy cows is ensuring they always have enough water and uh, what we in this situation we're using mobile water troughs and a tanker that comes in actually twice a day it's a 10,000 liter tanker for 170 cows and you needing it to move twice a day that's quite an expensive option another option is running a pipeline with hydrants but either way you're going to need mobile water troughs and you're going to need float valves to ensure they're full not relying on someone to come and switch it on or turn on the water as it gets low because you'll always run short of water. So to do your strip grazing, you obviously need to have a decent electric fence system. And uh, one of the things we find really easy and good to use is a, is a solar energizer like this, um, which means you don't have to keep taking batteries back to for charging and it ensures that you've always got good charge and a, and a good kick. Without that, you're gonna have cows running all over the place and your strip grazing is just not going to work. There's a number of options on, on pegs. These are some local ones that we make, or you can get the slightly nicer imported uh, pigtail ones. But either way, you need good um, insulation, so it's not shorting out your energizer. And in, in the wet season, you can get away with a single wire. In when it's getting dry, you then need to have a, another wire down here, which is earthed um, so that the cows get a decent shock otherwise everything will just go crazy and cows running all over and it won't you won't have an organized grazing system so the priority with with cattle is production and uh, whilst we might want to say we want to get all our production of grass that i think is unlikely in most situations uh, except for the except for the peak of the growing season so what we've realized is we we try and plan um, our cows to calf just before the, the grazing system and obviously the grazing system won't be long enough for them to milk their full 305 days so we will then need to feed them probably before the grass really takes off and again maybe a little bit through the season and but again even more at the end of the season so we are supplementing them uh, the cattle we as uh, we feed them concentrate in the dairy most of the season but we might even supplement with silage or um, maize silage grass silage even some concentrates um, uh, during during the season but it's particularly before the season at the end of the season to do that effectively you need some sort of trough feeding on the ground is is just a waste of money and a, um, a waste of food and it also actually destroys the pasture so here we're using a, a mobile feed trough um, these are pretty light and easy to use you can either lift them up and move them around or you can use these chains 
and attach them to each other and use a tractor to, to pull a whole line from one place to the other. We recommend not feeding on the same place more than once. So we um, in this in this dairy here, we're only feeding in the mornings. After feeding, they get fed. And then we look for an area that's got bad grass or needs to be impacted on, impacted by the herd, and we pull the troughs to the next place, um, which we're finding really effective to improve the pastures um, or the, the, the species within that area. One thing that's really important is how the, the troughs are laid out. Here they're laid out pretty well where there's gaps between each one so the cows can eat all the way around. So the other thing which I guess is most commonly utilized in Zimbabwe is our bush grazing. Uh, but I think there's so much more we can do with it. And that is basically grazing it, it well and keeping it in, in vegetative uh, growth throughout the growing season. Um, there's a number of ways to try and achieve that. Uh, we are using a um, strip grazing type system here, but with a far bigger area than you would with the uh, improved pasture. Here you're talking between three and five hectares, and we are ut uh, moving it every, every two days. Um, and or, or depending basically what we want is to graze the grass to stop it getting into seed so when it's at sort of uh, this sort of height we graze it down to about that height so you're keeping it in that area so grazing it probably two, for two days every 21 to 30 days so a lot of people might think that this uh, moving electric fence and so on is overwhelming uh, again the major issue is that you have to have uh, water at every position when you move them um, especially with dairy with beef cattle you could keep them in an area and take them to water forward and backwards and again it's quite a management thing so some people will resort back to paddocks um, the only advice I can give there is make the paddocks as small as possible try and have as few herds as, as possible making big herds which still get moved every two to three days and which have a rotation of coming back no sooner than 21 days during the growing season. Uh, when the grass is growing fast, you want to move fast. When the grass is growing slow, you want to move slower and, and you can take much longer to get around. So in this bush grazing system, the, what we've done is we've put a, a line, a 50 mil poly pipe, which you can run a couple of Ks, and then we've done turf valves so that we just uh, we move, we've got two troughs like this on a T-piece with a float valve and every two days when we move the herd with the electric fence we just take this, plug it into the hydrant line and then we've got water in that position. So it's, it's far more economical and, and, and easy than moving a, a, a truck or tractors around with water carts. So a, a very common way of utilizing uh, pastures and zim is making hay, but generally we do it quite badly. We're generally doing it when the grass is old and dry, whereas what we need to be doing is taking two or hopefully three cuts a season when the grass is at maximum vegetative growth. So with the Rhodes grass, which is a common grass in zim, about that big, uh, we want to cut it. And we, to do that though, we need to cut it uh, then tether it, get it spread out and raked together so that it's evenly dried throughout and get it baled as quickly as possible and while it's as green as possible. Okay. So the grass silage that we spoke about, this would be, there's many different ways of, of storing it, which is basically what you're doing is taking the green grass during the growing period and conserving it as close to um, green grass as you can for as long as possible. So this here is a pile of grass silage that we've that we're making now. You can see it's very green and uh, it'll basically be conserved like that and you can use it over the next few years and um, very good feed for the cows. Here's a, a pit of grass silage that was made about six months ago and you can see it smells like silage but um, the cows love it and the nutritional qualities are the same as green grass. What we've done here is we make sure you can see there's no mold because we use inoculants and it's covered with a thin piece of, uh, of film and then this black plastic over the top with then pile tires uh, to make sure that we're keeping out all the oxygen and conserve it in, in a healthy state fit for the cows. Um, another way of uh, conserving grass silage is using wraps where you have um, a baler and then a wrapper or you can get a machine that does both and basically what that is is you're cutting your grass and uh, baling it and wrapping it at about 30% dry matter. It's then wrapped in a whole lot of this film. 
and this is a very good way of conserving silage. The advantage with this method is you can move it from farm to farm, whereas a, a pit or a, or a, a heap, you would have to use it on site.